So many new things happening. Stability AI just dropped Stable Diffusion 3.5, so we're gonna check that out. And we have a lot of new node updates, including to our Flux Video Diffusion node, which is actually no longer just for Flux. Custom message presets in our LLM node and a few other smaller features in other nodes. But of course, the first thing that everyone wants to see is the Stable Diffusion 3.5 results. So let's take a look. So here we're using their 3.5 large turbo model, as well as their 3.5 clip text encoders and the 3.5 large turbo VAE. And of course I got all of this over at the Stability AI Stable Diffusion 3.5 large turbo page. On the model card tab you can see some examples here as well as some information about how the model works and of course you can go to the files and versions to get the model which is this file right here. 16 and a half gigs not too bad. And of course you'll want to run right click on this save link as go into your models and then into checkpoints and save that right there and the VAE of course is right in here you'll want to right click that save link as into models and VAE and save it right there and for the text encoders they have three I just grabbed these first two so if you go into this folder I selected this FP16 right click on that save link as into your models into clip and save it right in there and on the second one same thing fp16 right click save link as and into your clip folder as well so once you have all of those downloaded in the right folders and you may need to give your comfy a restart or you might just be able to click the little refresh button down there either way once you do one of those you should be able to see the models in your drop down list right here you can see i've renamed mine to sd 3.5 large turbo dot sft and i've done the same thing with the clip and vae models just to make all the names a little shorter and a little more consistent so we have all of those and we have our prompts here in the llm node you can see we have two positive and two negative prompts since we are using stable diffusion we have negative prompts and on the prompt combinations i have this on one to one which means this will run each positive with each negative so you can see the two prompts that were generated here one for the man walking down the street and one for the woman walking down the street and of course the negative for our man prompt is realistic and photo so we'll expect our man to be very cartoonish and the negative for our woman prompt is anime and cartoon so we would expect her to be very realistic over in the sampler group we are using a 1024 by 1024 empty latent image and we have Euler DDIM uniform for our sampling and scheduling algorithms guidance or cfg is set to four going for 32 steps denoise at one of course max shift and base shift are irrelevant here our latent multiply set to 1.4 and the rest of these are just related to the parameters we want to print on our images so let's see the results so here is our animated man and our realistic woman you can see all of the prompts are included as you can clearly see even with a fairly long prompt and a pretty low guidance for stable diffusion we have successfully generated a very animated looking man walking down a street and a very realistic woman walking down a street and as someone who pretty much exclusively uses flux i have to say i am pretty impressed with these results which is why I'm glad we now have the unified model loader and unified sampler to be able to take advantage of not only flux or stable diffusion but both right in one workflow and this brings us to our next update which is going to be on our FVD sampler which it is available if you want to play around with it it is fully functional right now and available for download but you have to tweak all of these parameters yourself so basically we are in the process now of testing a huge variety of different combinations of these settings finding combinations that work well and condensing them into a drop down list of presets so that you don't have to manage all of these parameters yourself you'll still have the ability to manually control these if you want but for those who don't want to you'll have a nice little drop down menu to select from presets and that will take care of all of these settings for you also as I mentioned earlier this node is no longer going to be for flux only it will now be 
able to accommodate any of the models that you would typically use in your unified sampler. So if you don't want to use Flux to reprocess your images, maybe you want to use the new Stable Diffusion 3.5, which seems like it will give you pretty solid results. That will now be an option. As I mentioned earlier, the LLM node is going to be getting some similar types of presets, but in terms of the types of prompts you want to generate with the language model. So if like in the case of our second prompt, you want to generate a high resolution 4K realistic looking image, you really could just type woman walking down the street and select realistic and leave your negative prompt blank if you'd like, and you would get a prompt output like this that takes care of the rest for you. So that pretty much covers it for this one. SD 3.5 looks great. Awesome new features in the nodes. Oh, and we got a Discord channel as well. So go and check that out. Of course, there will be a link in the description. Lots of cool stuff going on over there and plenty of knowledgeable people to help you out if you need it. And a lot of us are in very different time zones. So it's pretty likely that you will get a response from someone pretty much day or night wherever you are. If you haven't yet joined us over on the live streams, I would also highly recommend you do that. You'll be able to see live progress and submit your feature requests for the nodes in real time. And again, a really great place to ask your questions. We have plenty of knowledgeable people over in the chat there as well. And it's not all AI chat. We do have some interesting conversations about other things as well. So it's a fun time and a good place to get help if you need it. And since we have people in very different time zones, we are going to start having streams at 8 a.m. and at 8 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully that helps for those of you who can't join in one or the other. And now I got to prep for this evening's live stream. I hope to see you guys all there. And if not, I will see you on the next one. Take care.